this fucking episode of Nobunaga, shit took got serious in this one. So we find out that the reason why the invasion objects have been getting around, so he's just like, where, how are they able to, you know, get to the Atlantic Ocean over, like, one minute and get to the other side of the world and then, and it finds out that they have a tunnel system pretty much under the earth, under the, the seabed, where they're pretty much just traveling and pretty much they find out this huge fucking invasion monster lives in there. So it's pretty much up to the um, first platoon to actually go in there and look, whilst Galileo and Hunter and Virok are there. It actually ends up where the second platoon has to arrive as well, just to deal with how serious this objective is. And when they see this huge monster, they just get the fuck out of there, because it's like some giant cracking thing. And when you even see that, one point that Galileo is actually getting fucked because one of her spears is like connected to like getting some information about it and Vidoc is like you've got to stay on to that you've got to stay on to that information because Vidoc doesn't give a fuck about Galileo she's like there and her face is getting crushed like half her face has had to be like blacking out because I'm guessing like that face is probably in the manga is like all like crushed and fucked up she's bleeding she's crying and yet she's trying to do this and if the one for the second platoon she would have died then and it was like Vidoc shows that you know he was Work comes for like, and he even said that like when they went return for a bit, it's like you can't even go and see her for like two minutes, and it's like you absolute scumbag. Like that was just to me that like I th I felt like that sort of made the episode that bit with Galileo because I felt that sh that showed how grim this fucking like, point is with how serious this is, and when. You see that even though the first platoon and second platoon hate each other, they have to work against this. And only Nobunaga actually knows that the monster was aiming for the ship and she has to save them. But it was pretty bad. She actually shoots apart the ship so the missile can actually go through because she was going to shoot it from point blank. Everyone would have just got wiped out. But because of that, Nobunaga fall to the sea and... So at the moment, we don't know what's happening to her right now. And that's like, and it shows like in the preview, unfortunately, that's spoiled that she gets back up and that she's also as well, like, seems like she's going to, like, see Azawa set again. And overall, this episode was actually really enjoyable. But I really did like it. It's probably one of the better ones we've had for a while. Pretty much, I'd say this is probably one of the best ones we've had since, like, episode one and two, really. Because um, I think people are going to agree that um, Nobunaga has gone down a little bit downhill. And I felt like this episode really made it for me. And it's just going to make me wonder, though, we've only got like a month left of the episode, so how are they going to really wrap this up since it is an ongoing monthly? And to be honest, we don't even know if we're even still going, if we're in filler or not, anything. That's a true question. But I really want to check out the manga once it ends, but I think no one's translated the manga yet, so it'll be interesting to see. But overall, this was an 8 out of 10. Really reinstalled a bit of faith into Nobunaga. And just let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But that's all for me, so thank you very much for watching. As always, remember, I'll see you guys.